Uh, uh, hi everyone and uh, welcome back uh, to uh, this series of electrical P7 power flow uh, power systems engineering for BO exam and this is part two of uh, this question which is about power power flow so I solved this uh, part uh, in the previous video okay and now I will be solving part two and part number uh, number three as I mentioned in the previous video, the load flow questions after the COVID is basically more generic questions and I would say a bit shallow in terms of the requirements. It just tests your basic understanding of the power flow. And I will be solving another question to demonstrate this more. So they will ask different aspects, but they don't ask you to solve the power system or doing any iteration. But that this is not necessarily will be the case of the exam. So you have to be prepared for as many questions as, as you can. So here it says that this is an IEEE 3 bus system. We have three trans transmission lines. We have three buses. And you are given the load at bus number two and the load at bus number three. Then it says identify the bus type for each of the three buses. What is the bus type? We have three different buses. I will start from bus number three. When you are given basically the load, so the bus is only connected to a load, this is called PQ bus or load bus sometimes, but this is a PQ bus. This is what we know. Okay, so this is basically your PQ bus. There is no generator here. Bus number two, which is has a combination of a generator and a load, this is called BV bus. Okay, so this is a bus that you can control your voltage magnitude, okay? And you could have load or you, you may not have load as well. Finally, and this is usually bus number one, we identify it as what we call it the swing bus or the slack bus. Now, what is this bus is doing in the calculations, of course? Uh, basically, now I know the load. For example, here, the P is uh, 50 here in this load. This is 50 and this is 250. So the total load is 300. Of course, your generator has to supply this, okay? So basically the load is 300 megawatt plus the losses. Now you don't know the losses before you solve the system, okay? So you, do, you cannot assign the exact number of power at the beginning. So we keep a bus, we call it the swing bus, okay? Or the slack bus, whatever left of the power can be assigned to that to that bus, okay? So these are the three different buses you have them in the power system. If you are preparing for a load flow analysis, so this is the pre-power flow problem. Uh, we want to fill in the following table to start with a flat start when you have our first assumption. Okay, so let's start by the, uh, the first bus is the swing bus. In the swing bus, basically we know the voltage magnitude and we basically know the angle. So this is usually, we know, angle magnitude of one per unit, okay? And the angle is basically uh, zero, okay? The PG and the QG, we don't know them here. This is, we calculate them at the end of the iteration. The PL and the QL for this swing bus, they are zero, there is no load. Let's go to the bus number, bus number two. It's a BV bus. When I say BV bus means that we know the P and we know the V, okay? Now here, it, nothing has been assigned, okay? So this is, could be something has been left or we can assign it ourselves, okay? So the voltage magnitude, one per unit, we can assign it as one per unit. The angle is unknown here in this bus. We need to calculate the angle. How much PG, okay, it's not really identified here. Usually it is given, but we can assume a value. Since the load is 300 megawatt plus losses, I can assign anything less than 300 megawatt. Let's say 200 megawatt, 150 megawatt. We can assign anything 
uh, of course, it has to be within the genetic capability, but we are not really considering this at that stage. Uh, how much QG, we don't know. So this is also is unknown. So this is how it needs to be calculated. And the PL and the Q are given to you as 250 and 150. Let's go now to the, uh, the PQ, the PQ bus. In the PQ bus, we start the iteration by assuming the voltage as one and angle zero for the iteration. Okay. And uh, by the way, for bus number two, we don't know the angle, but we assume it zero as well. So we give it an initial guess. Yes, we don't know it, okay, but we assume it as equal to uh, zero. PG and QG, this is zero and zero in, in these two. And the PL is 50 and, and 20. So these are the values that when we start the iteration. So basically here you are PG and QG is unknown at the first pass here. The angle is unknown, but we assume it for the PV bus as equal to zero. And the QG, we don't know it. We need to, to basically to uh, calculate it as we do the, the iteration. So that is the general, uh, basically, treatment of the, of the load flow problem. The second question says here, how is the load flow used to support power system maintenance work? So we need to, how to support the maintenance work? and the long-term planning work, two separate cases. So basically, we'll talk about the maintenance by itself and the planning. Now, this is a typical power system where you have the generators, you have the breakers, transformers, transmission lines, and all these components basically need maintenance. And when we, when we do maintenance, you many times you have to take the unit out from the power system. So basically, there will be no power flow through this one. So this. But for example, let's say we took T1 out for maintenance or B1 of maintenance. So this generator now cannot be used to supply the power. Okay. So now we have only this generator to supply the load. The question is, can the generator supply the loads or not? So what we do, we do the load flow. So once we do the load flow, we'll see that can the generator supply the loads? Will we have any overload? Will be, for example, this transformer overloaded, this overhead lines is overloaded when we do the maintenance. So the maintenance, the load flow will help us to see what would be the status of the power system if we take any unit basically for, for maintenance. And knowing the load profile as well, so we might select at the during the time, the time that the power is not or the demand is less, okay? And that also something very important, when to schedule the, the maintenance. Many people, they like to schedule the maintenance in the winter, not in the summer, because the demand is less. Plus, maybe in the early morning, okay, because again, the demand is less or late in the, in the night. So the load flow is definitely very important to help us uh, see what is the consequences of removing the item for the maintenance. For long-term planning, this is also very important. Now, these, these loads are not static. They are basically dynamic. So they change during the day and during the season. But also, as the city is growing, the load will start to increase. Okay, So there is a forecasting department usually in the utility. And this will tell you, okay, after one, two, three, four, five years, the load will increase by five, 10, 10, 20%. Now this is an anticipated increase in the, in the load. Will the system be able to cope with this? Meaning, can my generators supply this demand or do I need to basically uh, connect other generators to the, to the grid? Uh, do I need to have more BV system or renewable energy sources in the system to cope with the demand? Will my components in the system like the transformers and the overhead lines, can these uh, basically component handle the extra load or they will be overloaded? Then maybe I, if they are overloaded, I need to plan. Maybe, uh, for example, uh, upgrade the transformers upgrade the overhead lines, getting a higher unit or adding more lines so that we can handle the increase in the, in the demand. So both the maintenance 
and the long-term planning will need the power flow to see the consequence of, of that.